What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy, Shoddy Flow, back at it again. I've talked a lot about different characters from the Mario universe who have a chance to be added to Mario Kart, but today we're gonna be talking about a different but equally important aspect of the game. Items. Items in Mario Kart have changed throughout the years, but one thing has stayed consistent, and that's that when one item hits you, there's at least three more where that came from. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has 23 items, if you include the stupid little feather, and each of them occupies a specific niche that makes them unique from all the others. Nintendo did a good job ensuring there wasn't too much overlap between the items and what they do, but personally, I think that there's room for more. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. What new items could Nintendo Nintendo introduce to Mario Kart. Nintendo typically retires items as they introduce new ones, and we'll talk about one of the vaulted ones later on, but I think it would be more interesting to conceptualize some new items. So let's give it a shot. By the way, I have a Patreon now, more on that later. In Mario Kart, there are explosions. Blue shells and bob bombs create massive explosions that spin out drivers, causing players to instinctively avoid those items at all costs. What if I told you that there is an explosion that you don't have to be afraid of? With a burst of friendship and adorable terrorism, the first item that I'm introducing is the pink bob bomb. Now, while the pink bob bomb looks similar to a normal bob bomb, they're known to be friendly to Mario in games like Super Mario 64, so it wouldn't make much sense for a pink bob bomb's explosion to do damage to the drivers. Instead, this is what I propose. After acquiring the pink bob bomb from an item box, you can hold on to it, drop it behind you, or throw it forward just like a regular bob bomb. The pink bob bomb also explodes like a regular bob bomb, but with a pink coloration to match. And then, here's the good part. When driving through the explosion, instead of getting spun out, you actually receive a boost, like a mushroom would give you. Why do I think this is a good idea? Because it includes both elements of skill and strategy to pull off. The ideal use for the pink bob bomb would be to chuck it in front of you and then drive through your own explosion to give yourself a boost. So it's basically a mushroom, but as a trick shot. But you need to be careful because other drivers can also drive through the explosion and get the same boost so you'd have to be smart with it. It also introduces an interesting defensive strategy because holding the pink bob bomb behind you would deter other drivers from throwing items at you since you would actually benefit from getting hit. Unless, of course, they were right behind you, ready to take advantage of the boost themselves. The pink bob bomb would be less common than a mushroom, but it would be acquired in the same relative positions as mushrooms. I think that having it be a rare option for the race leader makes driving in first place a little bit more engaging because it would be about as rare as getting a super horn. Although I do see an issue with leaders just holding it behind them and other drivers not being close enough to benefit from the boost, so maybe it wouldn't be a first place item. What do you think? I also think that ninth might be a little too low to get it, but it's hard to tell without having a whole last modded switch. That's gonna do it for the pink bob bomb, so let's move on to the poison mushroom. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the poison mushroom as it has appeared in countless Mario games. I think that the reason it hasn't really found its way into Mario Kart is because the mushroom logic in that game says that you use mushrooms, you don't just drop them. But I feel like nowadays in Mario Kart 8, I'm seeing tons of items littering the track, especially on booster courses like, for example, Riverside Park, where those freakish throat goat piranha plants are walking up to a spiral cave to lemming themselves off a waterfall. Has anyone stopped and tried to figure out what is actually going on on that track? My point is that there's quite a bit of debris on the track nowadays, and Nintendo should take advantage of that. So yeah, the poison mushroom is a mushroom that you drop behind you or throw ahead and sits where it lands, acting as a trap for any greedy driver looking for a free speed boost. It's kind of like the fake item box of games in the past. Now you probably think that I'm gonna go with the typical mechanic associated with the poison mushroom, the shrink. And while that wouldn't be a horrible way to go, I think that it's a little bit too punishing. There's a reason the lightning cloud isn't in the game anymore, man. People don't like being shrunk. It's not very fun. I mean, you have no options to catch it up to people and you just get fucked from behind. My alternative to shrinking is a loss of acceleration. Shoddy, what? What exactly do you mean by that? It, it just makes them slower? No! But kind of. Basically, my idea is that when you're poisoned, you lose the ability to attain an orange or purple mini turbo. So you're locked at level one blue drifts, basically. This makes it so that poison drivers are going to be going slower through the turn exits than normal drivers for the short time that they're poisoned. This makes sense to me because mushrooms in Mario Kart don't exactly work like mushrooms in other games where they just kind of make you grow. The poison mushroom is the opposite in regular Mario games, making you shrink, so I think it's fitting that it would also be the opposite in Mario Kart, making you go slower. You might think that this doesn't sound that good, but wait, 
there's more. When poisoned, players have a poison gas cloud surrounding them that can be spread to other players upon making contact with them. You accidentally hit a poison mushroom and now you can't drift for shit? Better spread that shit to everyone else before you get too far behind. These effects together make the poison mushroom something that isn't race ending, but still something to definitely try to avoid during a race. It even becomes a more dynamic moving obstacle as you try to avoid poison players driving recklessly down the track. The poison mushroom would only be useful to someone with people behind them, which is why it's relegated to the upper echelon of the grid. Players in the back will need to be extra careful not to get too greedy when they see a delicious little mushroom laying on the ground. The next item is a shoddy flow original, not featured in any Mario Kart game or Mario IP in general. Let me talk to you about the rotten banana. Driving in first can be boring sometimes because there just aren't many items that you can get to make your race more interesting. You got your coins, your banana peels, your green shells, the occasional red shell and triple bananas, and of course, you got the legendary but rare super horn. The thing with these items is that they mostly all play a defensive role to the leader, who will most likely use them to block incoming damage. I wanted to create an item that the leader isn't incentivized to hold on to, but that also isn't too imbalanced to the person holding it. So I came up with the rotten banana. First thing, you can hold it behind you, drop it behind you, or throw it ahead like a normal banana. But this banana has some interesting properties to it. Upon landing, the rotten banana will stay forever and will begin to grow items on its flanks, making it a wider obstacle over time. The items that grow beside it are other bananas, mushrooms, and poisonous mushrooms on rare occasions. And the items that grow all have their normal properties. So if you hit the banana, you're gonna spin out. If you hit the mushroom, you're gonna get a speed boost. It's pretty simple. Here's the thing. Items will keep growing indefinitely as long as the rotten banana hasn't been run into and destroyed. So basically, if it stays put, there's a chance that on each lap, there will be a new mushroom to grab. But be careful because if you stray away from your line a little bit too far, you might end up running into the actual rotten banana. A worst case scenario. Upon driving into the actual rotten banana, you are spun out like usual, and you will also get essentially blooped. But instead of squid ink, it would be like rotten banana goop covering your screen. I mentioned earlier how the user wouldn't be incentivized to hold on to it. And that's because when an item hits the rotten banana when a driver is holding it behind them, the driver holding it is then blinded because it splats all over them. So you better drop that boy. So let's recap really quick. You use it like a banana, it stays forever, it grows items over time, the items regrow after being run into, upon collision with the rotten banana itself, you spin out and are blinded, and blocking an item with the rotten banana results in the driver blocking being blinded. All of this together creates a really dynamic item in my opinion, because it both creates opportunities and obstacles for the racers behind, as well as for yourself later on in the race. Someone good at the game will use it to their advantage and take the mushrooms while narrowly missing the rotten banana, while others will try and fail miserably, resulting in a gooey mess. The rotten banana would be an uncommon item overall, only appearing in the item boxes of those in fifth or higher. This is of course because it's not useful to anyone below fifth, and also because having too many of them scattered around the track would become pretty damn annoying. That's all for my original items, but really quickly, let's talk about one that Nintendo ditched that I think could actually come back. The Mega Mushroom. I fully understand that saturating the mid to lower end of the grid with powerful items can pose a real problem, but honestly, I don't get why the Mega Mushroom had to go. Of course, the Mega Mushroom works like how a normal mushroom in Mario works. It makes you grow. When in big boy mode, you can flatten other drivers, which was super fun to do. While it isn't fun to be flattened, I think that it adds another unique element to the item box that I would welcome back with open arms. Here's where you would probably get them uh, entirely based on where you got them in Mario Kart Wii. I say, bring the big boy back. Well, that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and makes me feel all uh, kind of warm inside. If you guys want more content similar to this, just let me know. Either way, the Mario Kart Ultimate Roster Reveal series continues, so check that out if you haven't yet. I promise you'll like it. Guys, I'm on the long road to getting a YouTube partnership, and it's kind of my dream to make YouTube my hustle. So in the meantime, I have started a Patreon page for myself where for just $3 a month, you can support me. No pressure, of course, but with that money, I would be able to more comfortably pay for my rent and would also be able to bring you guys a lot more and better quality content like the music videos and stuff like that. So I would really appreciate it if you guys went and checked it out. I'm going to try and put some exclusive content up on there in the near future, and I'm planning on running some Mario Kart game nights with patrons 
questions, letting patrons throw out ideas for videos like this, or whatever you guys want to do. I might even start releasing my videos early on Patreon, so check it out. The ball is in your court. Do with it what you will. Thank you guys so much again, though. I will see you next time. Shoddy out. Deuces.